Okay, so in the following examples, we are asked to find the exact circular function value. So we've got a few examples here. We're going to take a look at it, but we're not going to use our calculator. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to find the exact value by utilizing the unit circle. So we've got to point out a few important things here. And that's this note that I've written at the top of my unit circle. And that is that the cosine is the x value, the x coordinate. So if we're looking, suppose, at pi over 3, the cosine of pi over 3 would be 1 half. The sine would be, right here, square root of 3 over 2. And the tangent would just be y divided by x. And we'll get into examples of that later. The secant would be the reciprocal of the x value. So in this case, the secant at pi over 3 would be the reciprocal of 1 half, which is 2. And then the cosecant would be 1 over the y, which is 2 over the square root of 3. Of course, you would need to rationalize the denominator. And then the cotangent would be the x divided by y, so 1 half divided by square root of 3 over 2. And you'd do those computations. So let's go ahead and take a look at some examples, and then we'll use the unit circle to figure it out. So we've got the cosine of 2 pi over 3. So we're looking at the x value at 2 pi over 3. And coincidentally, that one is just one of the cardinal points here on the circle. So there it is. Negative 1 half is the answer. That one was quick and easy. So negative 1 over 2. Okay. Now let's take a look at the sine of negative 5 pi over 4. So let's first of all think about where 5 pi over 4 is. 5 pi over 4 is right here, 225 degrees. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, well, that's really nice, but that's not negative 5 pi over 4. So instead of going counter 225, we're going to go clock 225. So we're going to go this direction, starting at 0, but swinging backwards, 225 degrees. And that will actually put us right here. So this would be the, the uh, coterminal for negative 5 pi over 4. So since we're talking about sine and it's the y value, the answer there would be simply the square root of 2 over 2. So square root of 2 over 2. Okay, now let's take a look at the next example, tangent of negative 5 pi over 6. So 5 pi over 6 is right here, all right? But negative 5 pi over 6 would mean we would have to swing down, starting at 0, going clockwise, about 100, well, exactly 150 degrees. So 360 minus 150 puts us at 210. So actually, 7 pi out of 6 is coterminal uh, with negative 5 pi out of 6, and it's y divided by x. So remember, all students take calculus. In this quadrant, tangent is actually positive. So if you look, a negative divided by negative is positive. So let's go ahead and jot down those numbers. We have negative 1 half, then divided by the negative square root of 3 over 2. And what I always tell my students when dividing fractions, always remember 2, k, f. C, and that is keep the first fraction, flip the second fraction, and change the sign from division to multiplication. So let's go ahead and do that. Negative 1 over 2 times 2 over the negative square root of 3. Uh, and we've got that right there. And notice what happens. These 2's just cross out a negative times a negative is a positive and we are left with 1 over the square root of 3. Now that would be nice, of course, but we do need to rationalize the denominator. We cannot have a square root in the denominator, so what we're going to do is multiply the top and the bottom by the square root of 3 to rationalize. And we end up with the square root of 3 over, and right here when you square a square root, you get rid of the root, square root of 3 over 3 as our answer for the tangent of negative 5 pi over 6. So really, it's not too difficult. The hardest part, I think, is figuring out what point you're looking at on the unit circle. This right here, simple arithmetic otherwise. OK, now let's take a look at the last three examples here. So notice we've hit sine, we've hit cosine, we've hit tangent. 
Now let's hit the cousins, cosecant, secant, and cotangent. All right, so let's see what we've got. We've got cosecant of negative 2 pi over 3. So 2 pi over 3 is 120 degrees this way. So we're going to actually swing 120 down. So 360 minus 120 puts us at 240. So that's going to give us uh, four, 4 pi over 3 being coterminal with uh, negative 2 pi over 3. And so we were looking at the cosecant. And if we look up at the top, cosecant is the reciprocal of y. So here, the, the fraction that we're looking at, negative square root of 3 over 2, and we're going to take the reciprocal. All right, and the reciprocal being 2 over negative square root of 3. So now, what we're going to do is rationalize this denominator, multiply by the top and the bottom, and we get, let's see here, a negative 2 square root of 3 over, now here when you square the square root, you get rid of it, so 3. Negative 2 square root of 3 over 3 being our answer for this one. Okay? Now let's take a look at the next one. Secant of negative 5 pi over 4. All right? Secant of negative 5 pi over 4. Secant, of course, being the reciprocal of the x. Okay, so let's see where we're at for 5 pi over 4. 5 pi over 4 is 225 degrees in the positive direction. So we're going to go minus 225. So 360 minus the 225 puts us right back over here at 135, which is 3 pi over 4. So coterminal with negative 5 pi over 4 is 3 pi over 4. And since we're looking at the secant, we want the reciprocal of the x value, which is this guy right here. So we're going to get 2 over the negative square root of 2. And we're going to multiply the top and the bottom by the square root of 2. So let's go ahead and do that. On the top, we get 2 square root of 2. And on the bottom, well, we also have the negative top. And then the bottom, we have square root of 2 squared, which is just going to leave us with a 2. And then what ends up happening, these 2s just cross themselves out. And we're left with a negative square root of 2 as our answer. Okay, now let's take a look at one last one. Let's take a look at one last example and see how that one goes. This one is going to be the cotangent of negative 5 pi out of 6. So we've got 5 pi out of 6 being 150. So negative pi out of 6 would be the 360 minus 150, putting us at 210. So coterminal with negative 5 pi out of 6 is 7 pi out of 6. And here we actually need both because we're dealing with the uh, cotangent. So cotangent, of course, being x divided by y. So let's take a look here. We're going to use these two numbers, negative square root of 3 over 2 divided by negative 1 half. Okay, so let's go ahead and drop that down. Negative square root of 3 over 2 divided by negative 1 over 2. And remember, all students take calculus. This is in quadrant 3. A negative divided by a negative is positive. So the answer, of course, here is going to be a positive. So when we are dividing fractions, we always remember to keep, flip, and change KFC. Negative square root of 3 over 2 times 2 over negative 1. And the 2s cross out, negatives cross out, become positive, leaving us with a square root of 3. So here is our answer. So what did we use? What knowledge did we use? Well, we needed the unit circle. We needed to know the identities for all of these trigonometric ratios. And we needed to know uh, some knowledge of terminal points. So um, be sure you know all of this and, and you're set. Um, this is really quite easy because you're really just reading it all off of the circle. If you have to memorize the circle, well, that's another story. But it's really not that bad. It's really, do I know how to count to three? Because look, 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3. 
and then you just kind of need to know the signs. Everything is divided by 2, square root of anything that's not 1. It's a very simple trick to memorize the actual entire circle. And it's something that I've gone over in my classes with my students. So if this video helped, if you liked it, be sure you like and subscribe. Thank you very much for watching.